What's up guys, Joey from Heart Pirates TCG here. I have a video where people on my Discord ask me questions and then I'm going to answer them. Question one, Akumu asked, what video games do you play? Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I used to classify myself as a gamer, and then I realized that I actually don't play as many games as I used to. Um, my favorite games of all time are Fire Emblem Blazing Blade, Halo 3, Halo Reach. Um, I really liked Gears of War uh, 2 and 3, um, StarCraft 2, things like that. But now, today, I don't really play a lot of games anymore. Uh, uh, Witcher 3 is obviously really great as well. Um, because I just don't really think that the gaming landscape is as good as it used to be. But ideally, you know, I was very excited for the League of Legends M uh, MMORPG that was coming out, but it was canceled. And now I'm not really looking forward to any games except for maybe Once Human that's coming out uh, later this year. So other than that, not really looking forward to much. And I don't really play a whole lot of games right now, but I would ideally like to play a lot more games in the future if they're actually good. Donnie Boy asks, what accomplishments in your life are you most proud of? That's actually a really good question. One, graduating basic training was definitely an accomplishment because um, I quit a lot of things because I, um, for those of you guys who don't know, I'm bipolar. So like I have a, a massive change of interest in a lot of things and me graduating basic training and, you know, um, doing all these, like, like, in my opinion, impressive things in the military. Um, it was one of the first times in my life I actually like saw something through and, um, and I did it well too, um, which was, um, just, just huge for me, you know, because, you know, not a lot of people can actually, you know, be in the military. So it was, it was a, it was an honor for me. And then being able to graduate basic training and like, it, it just, it just felt really, it felt really impressive to me. Um, because not a whole lot of people I felt like could do it. And then, um, having that mental fortitude, you know, only having a couple hours of sleep pretty much every day for two months, two and a half months, um, getting yelled at pretty much every single day. And on top of, you know, everything else, it was, it was definitely really difficult. So I think probably graduating basic training was the most, um, it's, it's the thing I'm most proud of like single accomplishment. But one of the things that I'm really proud of too, is like, um, I used to be like a really, I feel like I used to be really like, just like a shitty human being. Like I, I like I, I didn't really have like a lot of integrity. I didn't really have like a lot of like, um, I, I wasn't my own person, you know? And, um, me becoming my own person and like, like not caring, not caring as much what people think, obviously, obviously it still gets to me, you know, sometimes, but you know, like just being myself and like allowing other people to see like my true self. Um, honestly, like I'm proud of that because for a long time, I didn't even know who I was or what I was or what, you know, anything about me. And now that now I'm almost 26 years old now, um, it feels, it feels great being my own person. So that was, that was actually a really good question. Bessie asked, what's your hottest OPTCG take? I'm not going to lie to you guys. <laughs> my hottest take, this game is not that hard. I, I, I really think that getting top 64 in a tournament is like really easy and there's not a whole lot of things that you can mess up on with most decks that would that are difficult enough to understand how to get over so like once you understand enough about this game you should get you should be getting top 64 pretty consistently in almost every tournament that you get as long as you are within a certain skill level which in my opinion isn't that hard to get to so it sounds so shitty because it took me four it took me it took me three sets to actually get to you know the point where i got my first top but since then i have been consistently getting in the, into the top cut so my hottest take is yeah this game is not that hard and if you practice enough and then you under and you learn the game enough then you can easily get top 64 almost every tournament that you go to. I hope you don't take that the wrong way. Kumu again asks, what is your biggest regret? Damn, that's that's a tough one. My biggest regret. So you guys know that I, I just I said it earlier just when I was recording this, but I am bipolar, right? Like I am by uh, I have I'm diagnosed with bipolar one. And um I was gonna I was gonna do some things that you guys, you know, probably <laughs> wouldn't want to hear. And um I ended up in a, in a hospital. Um, because of it and I was basically convinced to take these medications these mood stabilizers and these antidepressants these antidepressants and mood stabilizers had a really bad side effect of weight gain 
Um, and they also just didn't work that well either for me in particular. Um, I was taking like Abilify and um, Lexapro and things like that. Um, and a few other things. I can't, I can't even pronounce their names. And um, I, I gained so much weight from taking those medications that I'm still much heavier than I want to be because I gained legitimately like 60 to 80 pounds somewhere around that range you know, in six months taking a bunch of different medications and it set me really far behind on life and it made me super depressed for like about two years. And I felt like I was in this hole that I couldn't get out of. And it felt, and also it felt like there was a lot of opportunity for me to like, or I'm sorry, just opportunity in general that I feel like I missed out on because I was very depressed or just like uh, self-conscious or just a bunch of other things. And I felt like, I felt like I was just like, I felt like these medications cost me two years out of my life. And even right now I'm str- like, I'm not struggling, but I'm working really hard to get to back to my original weight that I was. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, I'm six foot two. I'm probably like 240 ish pounds right now, about, about 240. Um, but ideally I'm about 210 to like 215, somewhere around there. And I felt great at that weight. And even now, like I'm still trying and working out really hard and eating healthy and like all of these things and, you know, doing everything I should be doing to get back to my original shape. And, um, I don't know. It just, it felt like, it, like taking those medications, not only destroyed some of my relationships I had, not just like, you know, love relationships, but, um, friendships as well. Um, but they also, you know, set me back really far. Um, sorry, the, sorry guys, this, ga- this, this video is a little, you know, a little depressing starting out, but it's not going to be depressing. I promise we'll, we'll, we'll move to more like lighthearted ones. I think hopefully <laughs> swooper trooper. Yeah. Asked, what are your top five favorite arcs in one piece? I think you guys are going to, I think you guys are going to be surprised, but my favorite arc in one piece is actually dress Rosa. And I know for some reason, everybody hates dress Rosa, but I love it. I love dress Rosa. So it'd be dress Rosa, Zoe, Sabote Archipelago, uh, water seven and Arlong park. Those are my top five. And I know Arlong Park was like 20 something years ago, 25 years ago, something like that. But like that scene where like Nami is like stabbing herself in the arm to like get the the tattoo, the Fishman Pirates tattoo off of her off of her arm. And then Luffy like grabbing it, grabbing the knife from her on top of uh, whenever they're trying to stop Luffy, Zoro and Sanji from like walking to Arlong Park. They're like, no, 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 you don't understand. You're going to die. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then them just like kicking down the door. Or, or I'm sorry, like the the wall to Arlong Park, and their faces are like, like I, I thought that was like one, like a badass moment. I love that moment. Um, obviously, all the other arcs I named had their like really good um had their really good like moments too. So uh, if you guys want to talk more about that, uh, hop in my Discord. And we we can we can talk about that in like the general chat or something like that. But um, yeah, those are my top five arcs. TMF Spidey, what made you want to get your Law's hand tattoos? That's also a really good question. Um, funny enough, I was just cosplaying Law at MegaCon and was like, I want to make this a little bit more realistic, but also like, I feel like with One Piece, like One Piece has been such a big part of my life, even before I, well, even especially now, but even before I started realistically playing the game, like I felt like, um, like I've always wanted to live my life very free and like very, um, unapologetically for me having the symbol on my, on my hand just kind of reminds me of that. Uh, whenever I'm like getting like tied down with like, you know, like responsibility or just like, I'm getting kind of like stuck in my, like a bunch of like routines that are kind of like boring and monotonous and all these things. Like I kind of look at my hand tattoo and I kind of remind myself to like take some pleasures every once in a while. And like, stop and smell the roses. And for me, like that helps me kind of get outside of my own head and, um, kind of live a life that I want to live and that's good enough for me. So number seven, Kenny is cute said, what is your guilty pleasure anime? The one you either don't like being associated with the fan base or embarrassed to say you enjoy definitely Boko no Pico. (laughs) No, 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 I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. Uh, no, no, no. But I would, I would probably say fairy tale. Like I, I was watching fairy tale when I was like a freshman in high school and I was like, this is really good. And then I was like, wait a second. Like this is basically just like fan service and hentai combined with like a little bit of fighting. And, uh, yeah, I kind of just kind of, I kind of did not like the fair, like the fairy tale 
fan base is kind of, you know what I'm saying? Not everybody, obviously. But yeah, I don't really like being associated too much with like being a fairy tale enjoyer because like the things that come with it. But yeah, uh, I would I would say fairy tale. I'm a little embarrassed to say I really loved fairy tale. I don't even think I finished fairy tale either. I think I got like close to the end and I was like, yeah, I just can't do this. Number eight, Chair asked, how do you deal with burnout? You've talked before about you feeling like you have to achieve good results con- constantly to validate your co- content slash coaching. Does it ever weigh on you or has it gotten better? Um... I will say, guys, when I first started doing YouTube, I had obviously no tops. I barely even played in any major tournaments. And when I was like commentating on games or like giving like advice, people are like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> like, who are you? And I was like, damn, they're right, bro. Like, who the fuck am I, bro? As soon as I got my first top on Crocodile, I was kind. I was like, there was a, like a like a weight off my shoulder. For sure, there was a weight off my shoulder. But then... I felt like I needed to validate that it wasn't just a fluke. So I will say, as soon as I got my second cereal, which is literally like a month ago, probably, what is it, May? Was it early May or like late late April, something like that? When I got my second cereal on Sakazuki, I felt like I am a proven man now and I don't need to, um, I don't need to validate how good I am at the game. Um, but also like me just like, you know, now I have like four or five top 32s, a top 64, two cereals, like... I feel like now because I'm proven that I am at this level and I can be anybody in the game, um, you know, and at any given, I'm not saying I'm the best in the game. I'm saying like, I feel like at any given game, I can beat anybody in the game. Um, I don't feel like I'm, I don't feel like I need to like, like validate myself anymore in my coaching because if I help so many people get to like uh, top 64 placings or, or higher or, um, you know, the content that I've, that I've made, the videos that I've made have helped people like get better at the game. I feel like that has like kind of collectively given me confidence to just kind of be myself, um, on top of like my, my success in a tournament level. Um, but to deal with your, to deal with your first, um, question about dealing with burnout is legitimately like sometimes I legit legitimately just don't feel like playing one piece and I don't feel like coaching. I don't feel like making videos and I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll not make videos or coach for a couple days or like a week or something like that. I'll go work out. I'll go, um, I do cold plunge. So, um, I've been doing that a lot recently, go for a run, um, play video games, play basketball, hang out with friends, you know, take my dog to the dog park, just doing something in my everyday life, at least two or three things a day that like help me find peace or like help me enjoy myself. And, um, I'll I'll watch other people's videos on one piece too, like specifically people that I really like and I'll get like good ideas be like, Oh, that's a good video I can make. That's a good video like idea I can make. And then like, uh, it kind of just draws me back in. Um, but I've dealt with burnout at least like five or six times since I started, you know, making YouTube videos and playing this game. But I've always, I've, I've always been able to come back to it because, um, I just really enjoy the game personally. And I like, you can be tired of eating the same thing every single day, but you know, if it is your favorite food, you're going to come back to it eventually. So, uh, number nine freeze asked, what was the least enjoyable experience you have had with any TCGs? No Yu-Gi-Oh formats can be mentioned for it in the answer though. That is funny. That is funny. Cause everyone knows like, I'm like, I played Yu-Gi-Oh for like 15, 16 years and like, I'm a big time Yu-Gi-Oh hater now, but it wasn't always the case. I used to love Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, but the least enjoyable experience I've had with any TCG um, has probably been, I would say it was probably set two. No, it was set three. I was really down on set three because I felt like, um, to, to, to kind of go back to me validating myself, I, I felt like I really needed to prove that I can get into at least a top 64. And so I tried playing Zoro for a cup for like one tournament. And I was like, this is so fucking miserable. Like, do I really have to play a bunch of decks? I absolutely hate playing for a chance to like validate myself. And I was considering at that point, just because I already took a break in set two, because I hated set two. Like it was just Moby Dick, Moby Dick. You know what I'm saying? Like that was the format, but like in set three, I consider just quitting my channel altogether and just like packing up, selling my cards, everything like that. I was like, I, I just, I can't do this. Like, I can't just like play these decks that I absolutely hate playing just to like maybe get a top. Like this just isn't, this just isn't me. I would say my least favorite experience I've ever had was set three after, right after the tournament where I went six and three in the Orlando regional with Zoro. Yeah, I'm pretty down on this game um, for sure, for sure. Question 10 Jesse asked again, 
cards you think should be banned, limited, or eroded, and why? Definitely the card that needs to go is Gecko, bro. Gecko is so busted, bro. Ge Gecko is absolutely, as a Sakazuki player, as a black player the past two sets, Bro, Gecko is cracked, bro. Gecko gotta go, bro. If y'all are banning, like, y'all don't even need to ban Sakazuki. Y'all just gotta ban Gecko, because that, that shit is just, like, it, it's just abused in, like, every black deck, pretty much. Like, any relevant black deck, it just gets absolutely abused. Um, a card, a deck that I need, or a, a card that I think should be eroded. I think all, <laughs> I think all triggers need to be eroded to, like, the small hat crew said this first. But the all small, like, all, all the triggers should be eroded where, like, you, if you ever gain life, you should gain it face up. And only face up cards, could, like, you can, like, only those you can activate triggers. Um, so that is what I would do in errata in terms of like the rule book. But a card that I think should be limited is I think 10 cost big mom should be limited to two. I think low key, bro. I think the new ace should go to that card is actually fucking insane. And probably Anel needs to get banned because Anel, Anel has like a really bad like Anel is like a huge gatekeeper deck. And I don't think that it's fair in the way that it can just like infinitely heal and have infinite removal and with like Raigo and, and Gadatsu. Um, and also Katakuri to hit those in between kind of cards and it just being able to heal instantly and like it's it's just it's just really good it's just really 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 powerful those gotta go <laughs> question 11 goya asks what's the future of the channel looking like are we gonna get new types of content such as vlogs videos possibly collabs in the tcg community skits interviews or irl stuff that's a really good question too um the future of the channel i what i wanted to do is i wanted to make i wanted to make videos that are different and that was part of the reason i was getting a little burned out and i was going like i was going like a like four or five days between posting videos so i was like everyone else is just doing all these videos like that i would do and i feel like i don't have anything to add to it but i do have a lot of videos that i am post i am planning on posting pretty soon especially because i just got a uh one of my friends is uh is uh looking to like edit my videos um because he's trying to get back into video editing and um, right now he's doing it for free, which is great. And because he's doing a great job, obviously. Um, but I have some videos that I that I think can be a lot better or I'm more optimistic on now that I have an editor that is actually um, able to do these type of videos because he knows the card game space like that. Um, so I vlogs are definitely coming up. I'm, I'm going to start it. Like I, I said, uh, start series or I'm going to continue series on like vlogging, taking like rogue decks to local, see if I can win um, collabs. Definitely. I want to collab more with VV theory, small hat crew, uh, Kuro TCG. Um, one of a couple of my friends are, are planning on doing uh, some, some YouTube as well. Just I, if I didn't mention anybody that I'm, that I'm cool with, I'm sorry about that, but um, yeah, I want I want to I want to get more into into making videos with them. Maybe maybe Wimmy too. If you're watching this with me, I'll, I'll I'll do a video another video with you. But um, interviews for sure. I also want to interview like people that get top eight in tournaments and um, kind of get inside their headspace a little bit and kind of um, unravel like what makes a player get into that top cut. So yeah, that that's a good question. Uh, so the future of the channel is we're gonna be doing some skits. We're gonna be doing more collabs soon with like other creators, and we're gonna kind of get like a, our own little network and kind of you know cross promote each other's channels i think that would be a lot of fun definitely vlogs in the future um that's included in the irl stuff and then we're going to be doing some meta breakdowns as well also on my patreon the future of that is going to be looking like every set i'm going to go over every single meta deck that can be relevant in that set um that i that i have that i have faith in and we're going to uh, make like a complete guide for that with like all the matchups um, and talk about like deck lists, de uh, deck text, things like that. So a uh, good question. But yeah, that's the future of the channel. Question 12. Jalapeno says, if you could make any, if you could make a new leader, how would it play? And would the art be law or law? Well, I mean, I don't really have much of an option for the art, right? But um, yeah, so if I could make any new leader... It preferably be a be a blue leader, and the way it would play is I like to have high skill ceiling decks that I can express my skill. Um, but I want them I want them to be like a high a high skill ceiling and like have a have a few different ways that you can play it. Um, every time you play the deck, so the reason I like Sakazuki is because every time you discarded something off your leader effect, um, it, it just felt like um, it felt like that was a really important decision that actually mattered. So ideally, it would be a control style deck that allowed me to like uh, manage resources pretty well, but at the same time, like it allowed me to do other things than just bottom deck or you know something like that. Like I can control the board through like uh, like attacking into characters. I can um, you know bottom deck stuff or you know take stuff off the board, bounce them to hand. Maybe like a hand rip style deck. Um, I think that would be a really cool deck. Um, 
I don't I don't know exactly. I mean, if if it, if I had to choose to choose between law or law, I'd probably choose law. But uh, yeah, I don't know what kind of leader it would be. I just want them to make a leader that isn't a leader already. You know how we have two Luchis now and seventeen different Luffy's. I want them to make a leader that's actually like not. A character we already have so like maybe like a robin leader would be really cool because i really like robin and i really like brooke as well those are some of my favorite straw hats so question 13 is uh is from independent variable it says what is what was slash is your favorite deck in Yu-Gi-Oh and in one piece my favorite deck in one piece is definitely sakazuki like i said i can play that deck for forever and then feel like i can you know there's always like you know changes i can make to it to make it better into certain matchups and there's a lot of different like ways to play it and a lot of different ways to build it it feels like um in terms of like ratios and like uh, tech cards so i really like sakazuki my favorite deck back in Yu-Gi-Oh was either e-dragons or mermails and this is back in like 2011 2012 something like that maybe even maybe even like plant synchro as well those were really fun um like i said like e-dragons mermails and plant synchros like they all relied and light sworns too bro Yu-Gi-Oh used to have some lit decks um so like all of those decks were like really like fun because they were very high skill ceiling and they were also really good. But like they're also like there's they're like very combo oriented. So it allowed it like it allowed you to um I don't know, it just allowed you to like like really like do some wacky things and like do some really like, really cool plays that like expressed your skill level. And it was a lot of it was like resource management as well, um, which I thought was really cool. So um, I really like that in Yu-Gi-Oh. One more thing, if you guys ever played Hearthstone, there's a deck I played called No Minion Mage, where it was kind of like Katakuri in a way, but it was like, you basically played only like uh, events, you know, in one piece, but you played like uh, spells or like uh, secrets or things like that in your deck. And the deck worked, whereas like if you had no minions, right, if you had no characters in your deck, then like a, a, an event that you played would play a random one, right? So it would like RNG, like play whatever. And it was fun. It was fun as fuck because you would like, you would sometimes just like, like lose instantly because it played like some super shitty character or sometimes you'd like win instantly because it played like a 12 12 your opponent couldn't get rid of so it was like those decks are so fun bro i, I love decks like that uh 14 ghost asks other than triggers what mechanic do you want changed or added to make the game more fair and balanced uh good thing good thing i actually talked about hearthstone a little bit so i really loved hearthstone like early hearthstone was a lot of fun and i think a, a mechanic they could add is um either like quests or uh co like co-captains like co-leaders and what it would do is like a co like for this uh for this in particular to make it more one piece uh related uh we would we can call it like a bounty or something and what a quest or you know in this version you know a, a bounty would do is once you ac accomplish a certain thing you would be rewarded with a certain thing right as generic as that so for example in hearthstone it would be like activate seven you know spells and then get this character right in one piece it'll be like you know rest 15 or 20 dawn and then you know activate this effect right you know get get two 2ks back from your trash or something like that you know what, whatever whatever it would be to make the like the archetype you know uh you know for example like uh trigger six times or trigger f trigger four times gain a life you know what i'm saying or like um you know deal three damage you know uh add a add a uh, a luffy to your hand or something like that you know like something something that would help the deck you know the deck's identity i feel like that could be really fun too and also a co-captain or a co-leader you could have like a complementary effect that would like help um certain decks thrive and I, I think that would be really cool as well um vv fear and i were talking about making a video like that we actually got sidetracked but that that video might be coming up pretty soon uh, i don't know i'm not sure if they'll ever do that but it's it's a good idea or he zionius asked what do you expect the metagame will shift to in in a post ban soccer world do you think more aggro will rise up again or maybe ramp or combo centered decks so i think that one, Sokka being banned doesn't stop the removal decks. Um, Red, Purple, Law, and Luchi are definitely absolutely insane when it comes to removing characters. They can do it even more. They can either do it just as consistently or even more as consistently as Red, as Sakazuki. So bottom decking and removal aren't going anywhere. But um, I guess to answer your question, um, set seven is going to be really diverse because there's a lot of different decks that can actually top. And I, I think there's probably I think there's probably like anywhere from nine to twelve decks that can realistically get a top sixty four, um, and like you wouldn't be surprised about um, at, at, at any given tournament. I think in a in a world where like heavy heavy removal removal didn't exist, I think aggro would be the best deck. But also, I think that decks that can stick characters to the board that are like, you know, maybe don't have on play effects, but have really good effects that like 
you know, like on attack or like, you know, some other type of condition, I think those would be really good, right? Like, so for example, like, uh, like, like red green law now has access to Cavendish, right? Like, obviously that would be really powerful. Um, if there wasn't really a whole lot of removal, the problem with Cavendish is just easily removed. So it doesn't really, you know, get a whole lot of value. So, um, I feel like, I feel like with removal gone, I think, aggro decks would thrive but since removal is still a real big part of the game in set seven i think the decks that are going to thrive are the decks that either either have cards that can't get removed or have some type of way to like counteract removal um which plenty of decks do uh, question 16 alexander said is the game worth playing at its current state in north america uh just start just to start out regarding its prices Yes, I, I do. I do think so, depending on your situation. So for me personally, I've been playing since the game first started. So like for me, um, I have to invest a little bit, you know, every set um, now to kind of get the cards that I need to play the decks that I want. And then I'll, you know, top at locals and then get packs and then obviously trade for the cards I need this and that. But if you're just starting out, I would say like just figure out what deck is like best, it, like is like more fitting to your play style. And once you do that... Um, you can get really good at that deck for like the next like two months or you can even practice on the simulator if you want to um, for the next like two or three months and then um, you can basically you know win some locals right and, and top some locals and get some cards and keep adding to your collection if you get really good or you sign up for like coaching or like my patreon or something like that and you end up getting like a top 64 top 32 you know you know so on and so forth then you can obviously sell those prize cards and then you know buy pretty much any card you need in the game you know one top 64 you get like a 500 hundred dollar card which would buy pretty much any single deck in the game also coming from Yu-Gi-Oh or any other card game most card games are pretty expensive um to get any meta deck you're looking at like 200 plus dollars so with one piece it is very expensive but there's plenty of decks that you can get for like anywhere from like 130 to like 250 dollars and you can realistically top or win with those decks and then get more cards to kind of um bolster the options that you have so um i definitely think the game's worth playing if you have like probably like 200 ish to 300 dollars like kind of starting up money um, cause every, at the end of the day, this is a TCG. So every single game that like every, every, or I'm sorry, this is a TCG and the, and a hobby at the same time. So every hobby that you get into for the most part is going to require some type of capital to start up, to start playing it. Because obviously like, unless, unless your hobby is like hiking or something like that, then, you know, you know, any like materialistic hobby, you're going to have to invest some money into. Um, so if you do have the money to like get into it initially, like two, like I said, like 150 to like $300, I definitely think this game is worth playing because there's a lot of money in this game and you can just make your money back pretty much instantaneously. 17, uh, Michigan said, do you think the best of one tourney format benefits rogue decks? Yes kind of so like rogue decks can catch a lot of people off guard and the fact that we don't have side decks help the rogue decks because like if you if you're not prepared and you don't really know how the deck plays then you just like lose to the deck it, especially if the deck counters you because it's like some random rogue deck that like randomly counters just this one matchup so like if you're playing constantly into that like one or two matchups in a tournament that you feel like you're actually favored into then it does favor the rogue decks but the more the more chances you give meta decks i think especially with a side deck um i think the more times the meta deck will probably win because it's just there's a reason it's meta, right? So, like, you can catch people off guard with, like, rogue decks with a best of one. And a lot of times it does happen. It ruins people's tiebreakers. But I, don't, I think in a best of three, I don't think that's going to happen. Chop asks, what is your favorite basic trading moment? Oh, my God. That's a, that's a good one. That is a good one. Favorite basic trading moment. There's so many, bro. So many. One of, one of my favorite ones. No, that one that one's funny, but you guys wouldn't get. God, now I'm blank. Now I'm blanking on like the individual like specific stories. Okay, this is actually a really funny one, bro. This is actually a really funny one. Um, because it's like it it was like the first experience I had in basic training, and like. I really thought I was like in a world of fucking trouble, bro. So like there's there's obviously really funny stories, but like they're more so like military. Like some of you guys just like wouldn't wouldn't get it. So this one this one's really funny because I think a lot I think a lot of people will get it. So my first day in basic training, right? Uh day zero, they call it, where you get shark attacked, where like you're basically like um, <laughs> you're basically like get off a bus or whatever with all of your shit, and like the drill sergeants are like yelling at you like telling you to do something right get your bags or do this or do that or something like that right for us because i went to basic training in fort sill which is in oklahoma we had to like walk 
or like march basically to like our basic training uh like uh area basically right like our, our pavilion area and <laughs> and um we had to run so like part of it we had to march and then like once we got to like a certain like distance they started like yelling at us to like run to this like area right and we had like a hundred pounds worth of shit like we had like two duffel bags like full of like all of our stuff right like we had like our our freaking ocps we had like uh which which is like your 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 uniform we had like our our uh pts which is like your your athletic gear we had like our civilian clothes we had like like all of our gear that we were that we were going to use right like all of our gear and um we were like running with these duffel bags and it's in the middle of july like june or july or something like that in in oklahoma so it's like hot as fuck out right and we're like running, we're running, we're running to this like location. And there's this girl, I'm not going to say her name, but there's this girl there. We're going to call her R. And literally five seconds into her, like into us, like running to this like area with our bags. She goes, <laughs> she goes, I have asthma. <laughs> and she just quits on the spot. And she's like bawling her eyes out. She's like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I lied. I have asthma. For those of you guys who don't know, you can't be in the military with asthma, right? So this girl like legitimately is like, I have asthma and just quits on the spot and just like lays like like sits on her bags and the drill sergeant's like move your fucking ass. you know and like they're like yelling at her and she's like no i have asthma and she's like bawling her eyes out and i'm like yo like this is crazy bro this is crazy bro like everyone's just quitting day one and one guy had a heat stroke too like like probably like an hour after that some guy had a heat stroke and he like 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 an ambulance got called and he was like getting like carted off and i'm like sitting there like i'm already like i thought it was like a war story bro like i had someone like five people quit their first day one guy had a heat stroke like i'm like dog like people are dying out here bro like i'm not gonna am i gonna finish this and uh yeah it was just, it was just funny because like it was funny watching someone quit that fast like i've never i've never seen someone quit that fast before and it like it wasn't funny at the time but like looking back at it i was like dog like you weren't even like like, it was the first word out of their mouth and you quit. Like, how could you do that? <laughs> like, you go through this whole process of, like, joining the military, like, sign all this paperwork, tell all your friends and family, like, oh, bro, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And then to just, like, fail, like, your first five seconds, like, that, that was just hilarious. I don't know. Uh, 19, uh, Chop asked again, Padme or Megan Fox? This was actually, for those of you guys who aren't in our Discord, this was a very heated, uh, d debate for a long time. This as well as, like, Carrot over Lola bunny um so i'm gonna give you guys both those answers right now so padme or megan fox if i were to marry one right now it would be padme because like i think padme is like that like i don't know like something about her like puts me at ease you know what i'm saying like if i were to marry if i were to like to like wake up next to her i'd be okay with it because like while i think megan fox is probably like hotter i think padme is more like naturally like beautiful for some reason i feel like that's like more marriage material I, like I, it, it literally makes no sense but i also prefer padme's character in in uh in in, in star wars yeah I, I feel like like she's like a very like loving like wife so like i would want that whereas megan fox is kind of like not really the type of girl that i would normally go after because she'd probably like humiliate me <laughs> so yeah i feel like padme is probably more like loving and approachable than megan fox but if i were just to like with for one night it'd probably be megan fox now in terms of carrot versus lola bunny i'm not a furry guys but carrot is a baddie bro carrot is an absolute baddie and uh when i was like you know 13 or 14 you know watching that dress rosa arc for the first time i was uh i was definitely enamored to say the least so i'm going carrot i think carrot's way better and uh but lola bunny's obviously still bad so uh no no furry though no fur and number 20 is autismus prime <laughs> that's fine talking about megan fox it says least favorite color in one piece quotation marks because okay i'm glad you said that so uh <laughs> so uh least favorite color in one piece so for a long time it was red because i felt like red was the most unbalanced character or actually bro i'm still going red i'm still going red and for everyone who's like but what about yellow okay so I was talking to my friends on this, uh, on I think Discord and on like a group chat that I have uh, through uh, text messages, but I was like, at least yellow, I can try to play around some of the triggers, at least like sometimes, and sometimes they get unlucky. Like with red, you just die instantly. Like, have you guys ever gone against like Whitebeard or Zoro where they're just like seven at life, seven at life, seven at life, seven, and you're just dead? And I'm like, wow, that was not fucking fun. Like, I, like if you just don't open counter, you just lose. Whereas like yellow, it's like, 
damn, you get your heart ripped out by like a trigger, but at least it's not like all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like at least like sometimes their triggers don't do anything. Whereas red, it's like, yeah, you're just fucking dead. And I'm like, cool. So I, I do think red is my least favorite color because it's too aggro and I it feel I, I feel like I'm not playing the game. I feel like I'm playing survival simulator, draw 2K simulator and blocker simulator, where it's like if I drew 2Ks and I drew blockers, then I'm good at the game and I win. But if I don't, then I just lose. And I feel like I don't I don't like that. Whereas triggers like, you know, they can they can rip your heart out and they can make you like disc like they can make you like they can pop a character, they can like trigger beige, they can trigger Amaru, you know, uh you're the one who should disappear and uh, and win the game but like that's like oh they got lucky you're not good at the game and like I'm okay with that whereas like aggro decks they're still not good at the game and it's not like they got lucky they just like have like a lot of searchable like rush characters that can just kill you so like I feel like they can more consistently kill you than yellow can or like 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 yellow can they can more consistently kill you than yellow can consistently get triggers to win them the game and i'd rather play against a deck that i have more turns against than a deck that i have very very few turns against i hope that makes sense but yeah guys that was 20 questions i fucking am so sorry guys this video is like 40 minutes long I, with editing it's probably like 35 minutes i'm sorry but now you guys know me a lot better and uh hopefully you guys like these videos uh, i have a lot more coming out in the future so stay tuned for that if you guys want to like and comment on the video to boost it in the algorithm as well as subscribing to the channel obviously that'd be great i'm almost at 10,000 subs so y'all's support would be excellent be, be sure to check out my patreon if you guys want some you know so you know guides on competing in OPO 7 if you guys want to get some coaching from me be sure to join my discord for now until obviously my website has uh coaching on there and uh we can kind of go on one-on-one -on -one sessions but with that being said i'll see you guys later and peace